In Vollog 357, I talked about a bug affecting the uh, auto reset circuit when programming ESP32 modules via the serial bootloader. Basically, the issue was caused by an incorrect reset sequence regarding the enable and IO0 signals. And I also showed a fix which involved adding a uh, capacitor to act as a delay on the enable line. Well, this week I'm going to show you another bug which I encountered uh, in the same project, but this time uh, with the CP2104 USB to serial converter chip from uh, Scilabs. So recently I designed this little board called Voltlink. It's basically a USB to serial converter board, but one that has USB type C input and also integrates the auto reset circuit needed for programming expressive modules like the ESP8266 and ESP32. I also have a, a one millimeter uh, pitch JST uh, SH connect with a standard pinout that I call Voltlink and I will use this in all of my designs and it helps with space savings on small circuit boards. The PCBs were uh, provided by PCBWay.com which is the official provider of uh, printed circuit boards for the Voltlink channel and I opted for their panelizing service for this order and the boards uh, came out great. It, I was able to get more boards for just a small cost increase and I highly recommend you check out their uh, website and this option uh, when you order your next PCBs. Well, after assembling one of these boards, I connected it to my computer and the new virtual serial port was created and I thought everything was running fine, except it wasn't. I quickly discovered that the status LEDs were not uh, reacting when there was communication on the serial lines. And I don't know about you, but I want my status LEDs to be functional. It helps me get a quick visual understanding of the communication happening uh, through the serial lines. And I don't need anything specific here. I just need to know that there is activity and if there is a lot of activity or less activity. So I started investigating the issue and the first obvious check was to verify the orientation of these LEDs and working with these small SMD LEDs can be difficult without magnification and you might miss the cathode mark and install it the wrong way around. But nope, that was not the case. The LEDs were correctly installed in my case. So next I started searching for the problem in the way I had the signals wired into the CP2104 chip. But they were done according to the datasheet connected to GPIO0 and GPIO1 and I had made a small mistake because GPIO1 was supposed to be RX and GPIO0 was supposed to be TX but still they should light up because of their correct orientation. Now after a bit more googling on the subject I found this very unprofessional and unbranded PDF document that is hosted on the Scilabs website and this describes the problem I was having with the activity LEDs not being active and they link the problem to changing the serial number on the chips and I don't know about that my chips were new I haven't tried doing anything to them so don't know what's up with that uh, explanation but the important thing is that they do provide a fix which involves reconfiguring the chip via their proprietary software to uh, basically uh, enable that function to uh, make those GPIOs act as uh, activity LED outputs and their software is a whole suite which you need to install and of course you need to create an account to be able to download their software and sure enough it will need to download more packages from the internet and be restarted in the process of installation but after all of this I was able to finally program my chips and uh, enable their activity LEDs. But just imagine you were building, I don't know, 50,000 boards and you needed this particular function and you ended up with a batch of chips that had this issue. How much is going to cost you to go around the, the, the whole lot of boards and reprogram those chips? And do you think Scilabs would provide any support with uh, this kind of issue? I would guess not. You are probably on your own if that happens to you and you'll have to pay out of your own pocket to reprogram those boards. But at the end of the day with my low quantity of five boards, I was happy that I managed to fix it and restore functionality on the activity LEDs. And I hope this uh, video will uh, serve as knowledge base um, for other people experiencing the same problem. I sure wish I would have found such a video because I spent quite a few hours trying to discover the source of the problem uh, as well as the fix. And as usual, you can support the channel by simply hitting that uh, like button that helps a lot. Then if you want to do something extra, you can become a Patreon supporter for as little as $1 per month. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.